Okay, this sermon is entitled, Roy's is Self-Righteous Stupidity. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 51 reads, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Now, this teaching of Roy's is absolutely retarded. Number one, it's useless because there's not a single person on the planet who has repented of all their sins, and yet these people have the audacity to tell others to do that. It's like preaching don't breathe, and yet you're inhaling lungfuls of breath. And it's just a bunch of stupidity, and that's what it leads to, self-righteous stupidity. And I know this topic, it stirs up the idiomatic hornet's nest, and I really don't care. And the reason why is because of pride. People won't let this go because of their ego. Now, if anyone believes they've actually repented of all their sins, all they're doing is just setting themselves up for a chagrinning self-kick in the teeth. And the Bible has something to say about this. Turn back to Proverbs chapter 20. In Proverbs chapter 20, a question is asked, and the answer is obvious. And this is what you call a rhetorical question. It reads in verse 9, Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sins. Now, nobody can say that. The only people that think this or say it are hypocrites. And these street preachers out there, they have not repented of their sins. Whenever they're done street preaching, they're going to go home and sin. And believe it or not, they're actually sinning while they preach. It's called unchallenged hate. They hate the lost. They're preaching a false gospel. They're giving people no hope. And these unsaved false prophets out there, they actually only have one verse that they can go by because the concept of repent of your sins, the words repent of your sins, is not found in the Bible one time, and the Bible never says anything about repenting and having eternal life. But they do have one verse in Isaiah chapter 55. Let's go ahead and turn there. And it reads in verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now this is not referring to lost people. This is talking about believers who have gone astray, who have fallen off the beaten path, and this is just telling them to return unto the Lord. This has nothing to do with salvation. Now turn over to Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, we have an example of some people who thought they did repent of their sins. And they didn't go to heaven. It reads in verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Now, if you put repent of your sins in there, it would actually just fit right in. Didn't we repent of all our sins? Wouldn't that be pretty much self-same with casting out devils, and prophesying in your name, and doing wonderful works? Look at the conclusion of the matter in verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now these Roy's preachers are headed for hell. And the reason why is because this is not trusting Christ alone. It's impossible to repent of your sins and to make that a requirement or requisite for salvation. And at the same time, trust Christ. You can't do both. It's one or the other. And the people who think you have to repent of your sins, these unsaved Roy's devils, they're trusting in the latter. They're trusting in their self, and they're hell-bound. And in the meantime, all this Roy's teaching does is it leads to self-righteous, stupidity, and hypocrisy. And it does not lead to salvation at all, because salvation is by grace, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and it's a free gift. Repenting of your sins is not accepting a free gift. It's trying to earn your salvation as if it's a quid pro quo. So watch out for these false prophets. 
who are full of self-righteous stupidity. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.